So much has happened since I've last shown you my entire LEGO city. It's basically a completely new layout now, which means it's time for a new tour of not only my entire LEGO city, but also my Wild West mock, the moon base, and especially for the Wild West town now, I'll show you what everything currently looks like at night. First of all, so you get an overview of where everything is. In this section, I'm currently building the airport, which is of course still not at all finished. Then in between the airport and then the main part of the LEGO city on the right hand side, we still have this empty part right there. This is now the main section of the city where I filmed most of my LEGO city updates and then Back there at the very end of the room, this is the Wild West mock, which I'll of course also take a look at during today's video. But for now I'd say let's start in the LEGO city over there in this corner and then work our way around through every single important building and story. This corner of the LEGO city is probably already my favorite part, simply because of the storytelling that's going on in that building. I'll show you that in just a second. Just so you know, of course, this section is not quite finished yet, especially up on this corner right there. By the way, these are the functioning traffic lights and something we're currently working on is a fully functioning day-night mode. I'll also show you what the LEGO city looks like when it's lit up during the night. At the end of the video, for now, let's take a look into the old factory building. Taking off the roof of that building, you can see some illegal activities going on in the inside and that's actually what the main storyline in the city is all about. It's the mafia gang ruling the city and this is one of their many business ventures going on in the city. A small wheat plantation on the inside. My favorite part about the building itself are probably the sliding doors on the outside right there. Probably I'm going to automate them at some point so they can open and close automatically and then revealing the farm. On the outside everything is a bit worn down with these cracks in the paving right there. On the other side of the building we have a small basketball court which is also one of my favorite features of this corner. At some point I'm going to extend it in this section with a small skate park right underneath the bridge which is another favorite build of mine because of the size. At some point I might actually continue the city to this section but well that's for future projects then. I'll show you the inside of these buildings because every single building has a full interior towards the end of the tour from the LEGO city because then you can actually see what it looks like when the city is lit up at night. Continuing around the corner we then reach the small harbor area with a kiosk up there with all these newspaper stands on the outside. Just little small stories that go on everywhere. Well, the harbor itself is a bit run down just like the factory up there. You can see that with the rats down there, all the litter that's spilled everywhere. But in general I really like all the angles I've added when it comes to the concrete harbor down there. By the way, just a few small details I want to highlight right here. The rubber tires of course are when ships want to dock they don't crash directly into the concrete and then eventually sink and that's why I've added these everywhere not just for details but also of course so they actually have a function in the end. The center of this first harbor of my LEGO city is of course the lighthouse which I'm at some point going to light up although this is going to be quite difficult because I want to have a turning light in the middle which would then of course affect back there the Wild West Town which would then look stupid at night when we constantly have a light beam going through the entire Wild West mock every few seconds which is something I'm currently working on together with my brother how exactly we are going to light up the lighthouse. Following the staircase leading from the harbor to the mainland, we then have the centerpiece of the entire harbor region, which is of course the tram line running beautifully through these buildings right there. This was so difficult to build, to have the diagonally running tram line. A lot of snot building techniques I've used there, but in the end, especially when the train runs right there, it looks absolutely stunning. Now let's continue our little tour. This building right there, I didn't mention that yet, this is a small boat rental shop and then on the left hand side right there we have a ice cream truck. Right next to it, fitting the harbor theme, there is a small seafood restaurant with this beautiful outside sitting area. At the moment, there's no interior for that yet, but at some point I'll of course have to edit as soon as this building is lit up, since it's also so far in front. We have to have an interior because you'd then directly be able to see it. Continuing along the shoreline, we then have the train running right through the seafood restaurant and then the cliffs down here. Of course, the tram doesn't always run, otherwise it wouldn't really fit the overall vibe of the area. But in front right here, it's just a small touristic attraction, I guess. 
not something that is used for public transport but just that as a side note down here a lot of storytelling going on for example cliff divers right there one guy currently jumping off his girlfriend taking pictures of course one guy just landed down in the water then we have the wooden dock right next to it allowing the inhabitants to actually take a bath and taking advantage of the city's location directly at the sea continuing up here we then have the small souvenir shop with also these postcard stands on the inside and this actually then also functions as a ticket shop for the tram this guy for example just bought his ticket to then take a tram ride along the beautiful coastline of the Lego city. Back here we then have the marketplace and just a lot of activities going on. Once again seafood that is obviously being sold and a lot of other regional products, cheese, milk, vegetables and then bread back there. Also one of my personal little highlights in this area are the two violinists currently playing and just adding for the overall vibe. Down here at the second harbor we have a few workers currently taking a lunch break and eating pizza and then continuing towards the end of the harbor. This is my so far at least only ship mock I've built but I definitely plan on adding more ships of course otherwise everything looks a bit empty. But these always take a lot of time and therefore, well, I'm quite slow when it comes to designing new ships. All these buildings in front right here have a full interior right there. There's the bakery, for example. Then we have another restaurant right there. Of course, can't have enough restaurants. This is, well, a bit more fast food like, I guess, with the open grill in the middle right there. And then let me just place down the roof of the building I've just opened and now this is the highlight right there. Just take a look at what's going on inside right there. This is of course once again you probably would have guessed it anyways another part of the mafia story. These are two different gang leaders currently trading fake money for weapons. One storyline you'll also see that in this building right there is that counterfeit money is being printed by the mafia ruling the city and then well this is just currently their business trade they're having with a partner mafia i don't know how it exactly goes but you probably guessed the story and then at some point i'm of course going to add ships where weapons are being imported to the city and so on a lot of ideas i still have when it comes to this mafia story in the center of the city and right behind all these buildings we've just taken a look at this is actually the most difficult part of the city because these double train tracks really divide the entire city and therefore I've created this underpass right there once with the staircase right there and then back there and of course also in the middle of this platform and then secondly elevators on both sides and then you could theoretically also go onto the upper platform using this staircase go back there and then take these stairs down there and then once again also cross the train tracks. But this is always extremely difficult having trains running through a LEGO city that really divides the entire layout and I think I've started to manage that quite well. Right next to the train station we just have this little area with a small green island in the middle of all the concrete that's going around on the outside. Another kiosk which you can never have enough of bike stand right next to the railway station of course always makes sense and then I've decided to park most of my cars underground because I simply don't like to waste space using parking lots. I mean in this area it's necessary I guess but otherwise I always try to hide them as much as possible and therefore also the garage back there because that then really opens up the space to add more houses, vegetation and pedestrian spaces. And I'd say having now crossed this barrier of the train tracks in the middle right there it's time to take a look into that building right there because that's where originally back in the days the mafia story started. Taking off the roof I think you can immediately see that this is one of my older builds because I haven't tiled the floor but regarding the storyline you can already see counterfeit money is being printed by the mafia which is then checked by bribe police officers in order to then pass as real money and since I've many years ago started this story it has completely spread into the entire Lego city. Also extending the counterfeit money printing story up there this is the headquarter of the mafia and this guy is currently transporting money into this building where it's then furthermore distributed into the entire city. Of course just to have that mentioned this section is of course not finished at all still two buildings or something are missing and then this section once again same story 
I'm currently designing these buildings up here and then this section is at some point during the next few months, I hope at least, finished. Let's continue along the train tracks back here leading into that tunnel underneath the giant mountain. From this section it of course looks a bit stupid because of all the construction <laughs> I've built down here. I mean, look at this, it's just unbelievable. But I think this is a nice sneak peek of what it looks like from down here. Of course, just as cheap as it was somehow possible, I tried to stabilize everything, gain height and then on top use leftover bricks I otherwise wouldn't have been able to really use. Following the train tracks once again, we then disappear in this tunnel once again. By the way, from the viewpoint back there, it of course looks like the tunnel goes from this point through the entire mountain right to this section back there. So the train actually disappears for quite a few seconds and then it comes out once again out of this section and then runs diagonally along the train tracks, which I absolutely love. This is probably my favorite section of the entire city. The rural area, which is not as overcrowded as the main part of the city back there. And then, this is one project I really look forward to, the cable car, which is going to run up on top of the mountain, which I'm of course still going to elevate even further, adding snow on top and, well, I have so many projects planned, you guys have no idea. But I'd say for now, let's switch sides once again and then take a look at this area from the other perspective. So, just you have an overview again, this is the tunnel and there we have the train tracks that lead out of the tunnel and then this is actually where the first part of the city currently ends. This is my rural area with all these older half-timbered houses, everything right here is quite idyllic actually, maybe with the color of the water stream running right through the town, even a bit cartoony I guess. Right here, this by the way is the water mill and then next to it, this is the giant wheat field. I'm going to triple in size when it comes to this section. Right there with a small farm I'm going to add and so many more things that are planned. Right there I want to add a giant castle or at least ruins from a castle. This by the way is the second railway station, so we have the first one. So you get an overview right there. I've shown you this already. Then the second one right there and then I'm planning a third one right there, which will then connect the rest of the city and the town back there with the airport. And this is one project I'm currently working on. You guys know that it's of course not finished. I'm still planning on adding many more planes, many more other details. The interior of the terminal is missing at the moment. Then when it comes to the vegetation around the runway, I'm of course still going to add something. Not too sure at the moment what exactly it's going to be, but something I'll of course need to add for this area right there. Then the tower is still missing. So many important things I still haven't built at the moment, but something I still wanted to point out, the geographic location of the runway with a 33 on this end and then on the other side, of course, 15 is aligned with the exact geographic location of the room, which was just a small little fun detail I added and something I absolutely like. Now, since I'm of course still at the moment building the airport, this isn't lit up at the moment, but what I can show you at night is if we take a look around the corner right there where we have this rural area of the city and then the main city itself, in this section right there, this is where I've started not only lighting up the city but also automating the city and I think it's now time for the very first time on this channel to take a look at the current state of the lighting. Since we've just started lighting up the city, there's only this small sector at the end of the city lit up. The thing that is taking us so long is we try to connect the lighting with a day-night mode which then would mean that lights automatically switch on and off. But I think you can look forward to the next LEGO City Tour because then we have much more lit up in the city as well. Now another favorite project of mine, I have so many favorite projects you have no idea, is back there the Wild West Mock. And I'd say now it's time to take a closer look at what's going on back here. By the way, I've also lit up the entire Wild West Mock, which I'm of course also going to show you in just a bit. First of all, let's take a overview of the current state of the Wild West Town. In the heart of the town, we first of all have the church on the right hand side, right next to it the saloon, then a bank and a gun store. 
all these letters up there are entirely brick built, which is something I've consistently used throughout the entire Wild West Town also with the station in front right here. And this is something that always is quite difficult to build, but I love adding these brick built letters. It's just something different than using printed tiles or something that is pre-produced from Lego, I guess. Now let's focus on the storytelling. This is the sheriff's office, also with a small jail cell where currently these guys are helping their gang member to break out. Also something you'll see in the Wild West is that everywhere everyone is illegal. Well not only the jail breakout that's happening right there, but also these guys are currently on their way to robbing the gold mine. But of course the workers don't want to let that happen and therefore defend their gold mine by throwing barrels down into the canyon. My brother has by the way helped me program an explosion for the gold mine which I can show you right now. This looks absolutely epic and therefore just take a look. Also another little program detail we've added is on the other side of the Wild West Town we have a small shootout that's happening and I'll show you that one at night because that looks even better when we have the lights turned off and I think turning the lights off is quite a good idea when it comes to the Wild West Town. I'll do that right away and then show you the rest of the details especially on the outside with the small native Indian village. And here you can see the reason why I wanted to turn off the lights right off the bat because of the small campfire around the town on the outside. It looks absolutely fantastic and then this is what the rest of the Wild West Town looks like at night. All these little yellow lights, not too much, this was the most important thing but it absolutely brings the entire place to life. And also, now we could either wait two minutes for the next shootout to happen but here you can see how it looks like. Then, although this is a little bit unrealistic, I know that, but up there where you can see these small LEDs, these are other bandits currently planning to rob the train which is going to pass by in an hour or something. Of course, in real life, these guys would probably not have had big lamps up there, but it just highlights all the storytelling that's going on. And now, storytelling, that is actually the main reason I wanted to show you this part on the outside right here with another small LED I've added right there. This is where the bandits hide all their loot and then on the outside this is something you might actually recognize from western movies. This guy is currently being buried in the hot desert sun and well will probably end up like the skull right next to him. And although I could keep looking at the Wild West mock at night for hours upon hours because it just adds so much of a different vibe when the lights are turned off and everything is just with a shimmer of light, I think it's now time to take a look at the third main project which I've actually taken a break of for the past year because I was moving and all the stress with the Lego City and so on but we still have to take a look at the moon base. And although you can see that this project by far isn't finished we still have three empty base plates right in front and then all the details are missing. I simply wanted to keep you up to date with that project because probably also most of you guys don't even know that project by now. This is the landing platform with the rocket still missing, fuel tanks back there and now the underground moon base and you can actually take out this chunk of the moon surface and then we can take a look at what's going on on the inside. This by the way, the reason why the entire moon base is underground is because of cosmic radiation. The moon doesn't have an atmosphere and therefore it's quite realistic actually that at some point when we want to colonize the moon that we are going to build underground or maybe cover up the base with moon rock or something like that and therefore I thought this is actually quite realistic. And what's actually going on on the inside is this is a giant lab and experiments are being run about what it takes to actually colonize the moon, grow food. Therefore we have different small compartments where different humidities, I don't know, temperatures, air pressure and so on are being tested in combination with different foods that are being grown. For example a pumpkin right there, then we have a small water storage in that corner right there and probably my favorite feature, we have sliding doors. I'm not too sure about if I can show you that. Oh, well, I think you can see that. This is only possible because I have these thick walls and therefore this mechanism was really easy to build. And what I definitely want to add at some point for these three base plates on the outside right here, 
probably sleeping pots or a sleeping base or something that isn't used for so scientific purposes but actually for colonizing the moon and then I think this rounds off the moon with of course rockets I still need to build and so on just to keep you up to date about what's going on with this project here. I hope that this for the first time since one year ago when I've posted my last LEGO City walkthrough gives you an exact overview of all the different projects I currently have and even gives you a feeling for where which little detail is located in the city and of course in the Wild West town as well. And with that being said, it's now time for me to say thank you for all the amazing support over the year. I never imagined that within two years the English channel would overtake my German one, which I've created over three years prior to this channel right here, which is absolutely crazy if you think about it. But, well, absolutely unbelievable support and feedback from you guys. I can say thank you enough and I think now it's time to say Goodbye, thank you so much for watching, I hope you stay tuned for all the other projects I've planned in future. Until next time.